John. Welcome to Mr. G's Workbench. If this is your first time here, welcome and thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to start a build review of the Panda Models 9K330 Tor in 135th scale. Uh, thanks to Jim over at Kitmaker for providing the kit we're going to build and take a look at. Uh, you'll find a link to the Kitmaker family of websites down below in the description. Before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, hit the bell so that you get notified every time I uh, put out a new video. All right, and we'll get started. I just want a little background. My only experience with Panda models has been this MTV MRAP, uh, possibly the worst armored vehicle kit I've ever built in my life. I haven't even finished it yet. The mold uh, quality and the uh, instructions are terrible. Um, I've already given a quick glance to the, the tour and uh, so far it looks much more promising. The parts look good, the instructions look uh, much better. So let's dive in and we'll take a look at it. So let's jump into the first couple of steps here. First step would have you assemble the wheels. Uh, you gotta do two sprockets, 12 road wheels, and two idler wheels. I've taken care of that. No issues there with the exception of uh, E11 had uh, flash on every, the back of every single one of those uh, road wheels. Uh, you can see it right here. And then on uh, E10, there was uh, some flash on the uh, on the rim of the inside of that. Uh, just a, a little obnoxious, but nothing crazy. Taken care of easily enough. Put the wheels together, as you can see here and a little bit of sanding to get the, uh, the high spots off. Simple enough. And uh, now we moved into, into the assembly of the uh, chassis. We've got these E23 uh, arms here and these really small parts E39. They really don't give you, you can't really tell too much from these pictures. I kind of guessed at how they go. So I got them installed. You can just barely see those E39s there. These are all E23. The next spot where there's an issue in the instructions is the fact that they don't tell you what number the corresponding parts are on the other side. They're, uh, they're E40 and E45. So E40 is the opposite for E39. E45 are the parts opposite of uh, E23 over here. So I'm going to get those on and then we'll continue on with this. We're in the home stretch of uh, step number three. I've got the, uh, got the lower chassis, got all the work done here that they asked for with a couple of exceptions. Uh, if you'll notice here, there's some, there's a, like a dead eye there or something. Uh, they don't tell you what it is. And I don't have a part to put in that spot at the moment. So I'm left guessing, trying to figure out what it is. Another observation to make here is suddenly in step three, they're telling you about optional road wheels and optional idlers. Uh, you could have gave me that choice back when I was putting the first 12 together. But in any event, I'll stick with the originals and, and uh, see where it goes. Another thing to watch in the instructions is a change in perspective. You'll see here in step three, uh, see that oval hatch is here uh, on the front left side. But if you go back to step two, we were looking at it from the other side. And at the beginning of step two, it was flipped around the same way it is now. So just be aware of that when you're putting parts on and figuring out what's going to go where. So let's continue on. Uh, we got the road wheels and uh, a 114 track links on each side and a pin. So let me get them out. I'll show them to you and I'll tell you what I think. Speaking of metal track links, inside the box is this little plastic box and it contains a whole bunch of these metal track links and a bag full of pins. So let me try and put these together and I'll show you the results. Alright, I've started working on the, the metal track links uh, so far. I did about a dozen of them, maybe took me 10 or 15 minutes at, at best. 
Uh, so far they've gone together well. Show you the the end of one of these. You can see the the holes are drilled out. I've, there's been minimal flash on the individual links so far. So I'll, I'll try and assemble one on camera. This is about the fourth time I'm trying. Uh, I'm going to show you the pin here. If you look, this end of the pin has a slight bulge in it compared to the rest of the pin. So that's going to go on the outside. So let's try this again. Get the pin in there. There you go. And uh, so, like I said, so far so good. They're flexible. I haven't decided if I'm going to burnish them yet or if I'm going to paint them. So let me finish, and the next time that I show you, I'll have 114 links per side, and we'll, we'll continue on. Many, many minutes later. All right, tracks are done. Uh, they went together easily. Uh, I think out of the out of two runs, there's 115 on each side, contrary to the instructions, which say 114. Uh, I dry fitted them, and it looks like it's got to be 115, otherwise it's too tight. So out of 115 on each side, so that's 230. I had one, two, three, four, six that I, I couldn't use. And I still have plenty left if I needed them. And I have plenty of pins left as well. So kudos to Panda Hobby for giving you the actual more than enough that, than you need to get them done. So those are done. Uh, let's move on with the hull. Another issue with the hull, the I, I don't know what the exact terminology of these are, I think they're idlers. Uh, the little wheels that go into these spots here, they were numbered E28. Well I installed them and again took for granted that they go all the way into the provided holes and they don't, that's too far in. So what I've done is I, I had to clip them all out. Uh, I drilled out the posts and installed styrene tubing and now what I've done is I was lucky because there's an extra set of rollers in the uh, on the sprue like a different version so what I've done is uh, I drilled them out and I installed some styrene rod into those and then what I'm gonna do after I install the tracks is I'll install these I'm gonna trim them down to size so that they accommodate the tracks properly and I don't have to put them in until after the tracks are installed. If it wasn't for that, the hull would be going together well. So let's just continue on and see where we wind up. Okay, we're midway through step seven and I just wanted to take a, a moment to show you the front end work here and go through a couple of details about it. All right, these two cables here, the, the instructions tell you to cut two cables at 85 millimeters each and attach them to the dead eyes that are uh, numbered L23. I would suggest making one of them uh, slightly shorter than 85 millimeters so that it'll sit on the inside a little better. As you can see, they're both bunched up over here and uh, that's probably one of them isn't reaching the latch that it was set to sit in so you can see I would I would just kind of like take one and, and see how much shorter you need to do it you're gonna have to do it by eye I suppose another uh, another thing I noticed was the vague instructions about how to bend photo etch the provided photo etch piece here is PE9 you have to bend it and when you look at the directions it doesn't really give you any sense of how to bend it uh, there should be a long side and a short side the long side I would think needs to uh, come down and, and cover the way I did it. I think that's right. I'm not entirely sure. 
the other stuff was uh, that I noticed was in step six, the two vision ports here. In the instructions, they're marked K22, but that's not correct because K22 is this hatch here. Uh, the real part number for these two clear pieces is GP5. So what I did is I, I painted the back of each piece with some silver paint, and then I, I put a coat of uh, Tamiya clear green over the fronts of them, and then I've covered them with tape for uh, painting. The rest of uh, step six was easy enough. It's just, the, the only other vague part was there was a couple of places where I had to kind of figure out how to bend these and where they actually went. But actually, if you look at the close-up drawing, it's not too bad. Uh, the only other issue I had here was these headlights, uh, G62 uh, and 63, I believe, are the other one, and 64. They go on to these uh, mounts here, which are L18. Uh, the problem with L18, the fit, it's not really a problem with L18. There's just vague uh, points where the headlight assemblies are supposed to attach to those L18s and it, just go with it. You, you gotta kinda just fit them together. The only other stuff I found so far that isn't really an issue was they give you these photo etch uh, ends for this, I, what I assume looks like uh, air conditioning or cooling unit and uh, I don't know why they did them in photo etch on the ends because you can see they've molded the front and the top so there was no point in doing that. Uh, Another piece of photo etch with vague instructions was this one here, which is a uh, photo etch PE13. It wraps around the outside perimeter of, of uh, K23. The rest of these parts went on well. Uh, the only uh, part that was strange here was uh, L25. <clears throat> Each of these is L25. You have to cut a lot of plastic off of it for it to even resemble these. Uh, but once you cut the, the extra pieces off, they fit great into the provided uh, slots. So the only other thing I did, by the way, that I would suggest doing now is I attach the, the top of the hull to the bottom part of the hull now because you can still see inside. You can still reach your fingers in and, and get everything adjusted. It went on easily. It, it fits in really well. So I have no complaints about that. So let me continue on with the, uh, with the chassis build and then we'll stop and take a look at it. I just wanted to take a second and point out this really anytime an um, armor kit gives you this racking to, to build from pieces it's just a mess. Uh, here it was G66, G68 and G6, uh, G59. Uh, the way I did it was to, to kind of get a sense of where it belonged I installed G66 here. There's a mounting tab on the side here. Once that was mounted and, you know, glued and tight, then I went in, I took uh, 68 and 59 and glued them together to kind of form that right angle, and then used that to come in and glue that assembly to the corners of G66. I mean, I got it as good as I can. You know, if you can do it, more power to you, because uh, I hate doing stuff like this. Then once I had that connected there, I went in and fastened it here. Uh, the biggest problem with, with this cooler assembly and the same thing over here is they don't give you any specific, there's no locating points, it, it just, it's there. This is just there. And the best I could do is do it by eye based on the, the diagrams. So, it, you know, it looks like everything fits, so uh, if it comes back to bite me later on, you'll be the first to find out, all right? So let's keep going. So we've got the hull finished. Uh, here's a quick view of it with, uh, with one track and running gear uh, dry fitted in place so you can see what it looks like. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, the build was fairly painless and it's uh, ages ahead of that, uh, that MRAP that I did, uh, well that I started from, 
Panda Hobby all that time ago. I'll just give you a quick run through of a couple of uh, errors in the instructions one more time uh, to save you some pain and suffering later on. In step five, uh, these plates here are marked on the instructions as D63 and D62. Uh, they most certainly are not. They're G73 and G74. The next issue were these, uh, these two items on each side. I don't even know what they are. They're not called out anywhere in the instructions. Uh, but by going back and looking through the parts I have left, these parts, I can tell you, are E18 and E19 on each side. Uh, I also mentioned the, uh, the periscope glass on each side here was incorrectly marked as K22. It's GP5. Back here you have on each side of the uh, rear you have a set of uh, three and three of uh, rear tail lights. In the instructions in step eight they tell you the uh, these pieces to begin with are incorrectly marked. They're marked in the instructions as K24. They're not. They're K51. You have the tail light assemblies. There's six of them. They're L21. Then you get an option that's not mentioned in the instructions. You can use the clear parts, which are GP3, and then paint them red later on and install them. Uh, or you can do what I've chosen to do. I've used uh, L20, or solid molded. And you know what? When I'm done painting, I'll go back and I'll just touch them with a, a, a little bit of clear red. I can't... It was hard enough getting the, the molded ones on while I can see it unpainted, much less trying to fin finish that later on painted. Everything else went on uh, pretty painlessly. The only other thing I'm going to tell you is if uh, if you're going to install these uh, these fenders on the side, K3 and K48, well then get your uh, you're going to have to get that sprocket and that uh, that other idler wheel on the front put on now because uh, you won't be able to get them in later. I had to flex these to pop them in because I made the mistake of installing this and not giving it much consideration. Uh, so I went back, I, I fit those in, the, I've got the tracks uh, just as a strip. I didn't close the track links up because I'm going to have to feed them in through the underside and up and around. So it's still easy enough to deal with. Just remember when you're painting to rotate them. So that's going to wrap up the, the hull assembly and the track assembly. I'm really happy with the progress so far. It's the first time I've worked with metal tracks. They went together painlessly. They were a lot easier than the, the plastic Sherman tracks, which were like four pieces per link, which was awful. So I'm glad uh, that went well. The, uh, the hull assembly went together well. The wheels went together well. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting the, uh, the turret assembled. Thank you one and all for tuning in. And again, thank you to Jim over at Kitmaker for uh, providing this kit. And uh, I will see you for part two of the turret assembly of the 9K330 Tor. Take care.